Today we're talking about the messy middle. As in, it's the middle, but it's like all of the work that we do as copywriters and people who write copy but don't identify as copywriters is what we do the most of. So I wanted to share with you, one, I was like, okay, today we should just like talk about the fact that so much of the work we do happens when you're sitting there, <laughs> like you're sitting there and I'm rewatching Mad Men for the 7,000th time because once I find something, I only watch that thing, um, Downton Abbey, Mad Men, Mad Men all the time. Okay. Um, but I was rewatching it and Roger Sterling walks in to see Don Draper sitting and having a drink by himself in his office and comments on how this is how you people work or whatever. Um, and it's really, we don't typically drink because we try to stay alert. Um, but yeah, a lot of the work we do is just sitting there in our heads. And I know we all know that, but I think oftentimes there's a sense that we should be scrambling to be busy, look busy, do things and not allow ourselves to have this really messy process. It's not as simple as, I know there's a lot of engineering and science to it once you start breaking it down, but then there's this whole messy part that we're going to try to help you clean up. I'm going to show you a little bit of how we try to clean this up a bit, but I kind of, if this wasn't called Tutorial Tuesdays, this would be like, let's just talk about our shit five minutes in. Um, and like be okay, like just having a group therapy session on the fact that we don't, there's this whole big part of our work that happens on the backs of envelopes, on sticky notes, on whatever thing was near you that you could, <clears throat> excuse me, write something down on really quickly. I now bought a remarkable notepad, but it has to charge. And I'm like, well, what am I gonna write on when it's charging? Um, so yeah, there are lots of ideas. I do a lot of my work when I'm going over and doing survey analysis. I'm watching sales demo, like replays. I'm um, everything, almost everything I do, I do in Notepad on my Apple. I have like 15 random Notepad documents going at a time. I depend very heavily on bolding on using like 30 asterisks around something when it's a big note to keep in mind. And this is not an easy thing to uh, tutorial. <laughs> I guess if we're gonna use tutorial as a verb, it's not an easy thing to tutorial because it's happening in your brain. And I have tried very hard to think and talk at the same time, and it ends up not so bueno. But what I'm going to share with you today <clears throat> It's a portion of a talk that I gave in London, I think it was, back when we could travel. And and I were talking, we're so over COVID. If you're over COVID, you're in the right place. Still wear your mask, still do all the things, but ugh. Okay, let's just move through this. <laughs> let's get through the sad part. And we'll start actually going into the little talk that I have planned. So it does, we're gonna go through the normalness of chaos in the middle, allow it to be normal. There's nothing that you can do about it. Everybody's like, well, what's the shortcut or the framework for research? And I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure there are some, and I'm sure I use them and don't know that I'm using them, but mostly it's like, listen and write things down, then look at what you wrote down. <laughs> That's. That's the shortcut. It's a three-step process. Listen, write things down. Look at what you wrote down. Ta-da. There you go. I could sell that. I'm going to write a book about that three-step process, but it's not. It's really obvious stuff, right? So we're going to, I'm going to share this with you right now. Share my screen in the hopes that that will work out. There's going to be a few things going on because of my multi-monitor setup. Um, so I'm going to share a screen and you'll be like, why are you sharing that? That doesn't look like the thing you should share. And I'll be like, just a second. Uh, so desktop two, desktop two is what we're going to look at afterward. Angela, are you seeing the ultimate message map template? I am. Okay, perfect. So are you now seeing the word question? I am. And nothing else? Nothing else. Just perfect. question, semicolon. 
Cool, cool. Okay. So, <clears throat> question. What's the stuff that makes it into problem, agitation, and solution? We know the framework. We know what we're aiming for. We know in attention, interest, desire, and action what we're aiming for. We know we have to do research up front to get there. We know that we have to do research to figure out what goes in an email sequence, what comes first, what's second, what's third, what's the order of messages to go in as we move people through a nurturing, a nurture to buy, a nurture to a demo, whatever that might be, sequence. These are the questions that you just saw and other ones that we are always trying to answer with this big thinking part of the process the thinking. So if you're used to looking for shortcuts, this is going to annoy you until you just get comfortable with the fact that this is the part where the thinking happens. And that's actually the part you are being paid for, the thinking part. You end up giving the client the final deliverable, but all it was was thinking and then using some frameworks. So we answer those questions by listening. There's surely studies and people who specialize in listening skills and active listening, all of these things that we've probably heard of before, there are ways to document it. But when it comes down to it, for me, um, I just, we just listen by like sitting there, <laughs> listening, using our brains to actively listen to it. So for example, we talk a lot about um, the importance of listening to Sales demo replays, if you can be present while a sales demo is happening, amazing too. This is a screen cap of chorus.ai, chorus like C-H-O-R-U-S dot A-I. You're probably not going to use it. It's a very expensive enterprise tool. So unless you're at a very large company, it can be difficult to do this or a company that has a lot riding on getting these demos done right. But what we want to do as copywriters, of course, is listen to these replays listening for all the things that we're going to need to figure out what to say and how to say it. And so our prospect asking questions and listening to answers, that helps us then figure out what to say and how to say it. So when you do, when you listen to something like a sales call demo, for example, and this works for survey analysis, it's basically everything you're ever going to do. This is what my screen looks like. I've got chorus.ai open in one part, uh, probably just shrunken it up into one part of my monitor, not in an elegant way. I didn't use a fancy shortcut. I just like went manual about it and quickly whipped up the notepad that comes with um, Apple. So, or sorry, your MacBook, your iMac, whatever it is that you're on. Every tool has these. I don't like Google Docs for this. I don't know what it is. Whatever is right for you is right for you. All I'm saying is there's very little formatting available in this. You can do all caps, you can do some bullet points. They're adding more and more formatting as they go, but it's like meh, like I don't need it. I think what I'm looking for most is just a way to quickly document my notes. So you're looking at stuff like this, just writing things out as you go. This is a normal part of the process. It's not clean. It only looks slightly clean because it's not handwritten, in which case you would never know what the hell I'd written down. Some things are in quotation marks if they're a direct um, quote from the, the speaker, other things are not. Sometimes I have all caps to tell myself something. Sometimes I have a bunch of asterisks. Sometimes I have arrows pointing in different directions. And these are all things that may or may not be true for you. I saw Bruno said, why not processing in otter.ai? I am a very manual person about the research and synthesis process. If I'm not actively in there typing and pressing pause and going back and replaying something, if I'm just reading through a transcript, that's more passive. And I find it far more valuable to be there listening because when I'm watching a demo replay, you can see, you can see typically the person who's getting the demo their face when it flashes back to them, when they look bored, when they look interested, um, you're basically reading signals outside of just the words. And a transcript doesn't really give you those signals unless it says like long pause, which would be like, great, go look at that part. Why was there a long pause? And you're like, oh, it was a crappy internet connection, damn it. 
<laughs> they just lost the feed. Um, but that's, that's one of the reasons like I go in there and I just, it is a very good use of your time as a copywriter to do the quote unquote transcription yourself. You're not transcribing. You are an active conversion copywriter actively listening because that is the job. Um, so you, if you want to use a transcription service, Hey, that's your process. This is my process. It's messy and intentionally. So then you find parts after that you go through and start pulling out things as you read through it again, later, give yourself some time. It's messy. You don't have to give yourself exactly 24 hours. You might come back to it during your next coffee break, or you might not come back to it for three days, whatever the case, but you give yourself a little time and then you start pulling out interesting stuff and you still don't necessarily know what to do with it. And that's okay too. So this came to the surface when this is, I'm not going to get into the, the platform that we're talking about here. Um, but this guy during a demo said, oh, I didn't realize Martin, an engineer, which I knew from context in the conversation, having listened to every single word he'd said before that, um, was spending three quarters of his time continually reworking every line of code every time this particular requirement changes. So, okay, I'm learning something here. Like there's this problem. Sounds like that's a problem. Sounds like the solution is first identifying this problem using the tool. Cool. What am I going to do with that? I don't know yet. I have no flipping idea yet, but interesting. I might do something with it. And then we keep going on and looking for things like words like worry and um, other bigger problems that people are getting into. So I'm worried about the overhead, et cetera, et cetera. This is like, this is a lot of really good stuff. And if you do use transcription services, then do find, or if you're like, Joe, I've got like 20 minutes to go through this thing. I can't sit here all day reading through um, or listening to somebody documenting, spending 72 hours doing something else and then coming back to it in order to find some insights. Okay. Then know what you're going to do a search for in that transcription. And this is a good example of looking for the word abstract or sorry, sorry. I saw abstract off to the side. We're looking for the word uh, worried for other things like that. And then your job is to come up with those shortcuts. What are the phrases that I keep seeing that typically have um, good content around them, good messages that I can then do something with so that you get the most out of those transcriptions and stop glazing over the parts in a transcript that you just don't get when you're taking notes. When you're taking notes, there's no glazing over. You don't document anything that wasn't an important thing or a notable thing, unlike a transcript. So we're finding all of this stuff in there. We're going to go back and look through it. But typically by the end of this, we don't end up with a beautiful summarized report we can use again and again. Typically you just throw this all into something and use whatever you can from it in a copywriting framework and go from there. You typically end up with pages and pages of unorganized notes. And these are actual notes that I have, just a sample of them uh, from listening to one call, nope, two calls for the same client uh, or prospect for this. Um, so this is what we do. This is a normal thing. We read, we synthesize, we ask more questions and we listen more and we surface things like confusion. We surface things about pain. We surface all sorts of stuff. But what do we do after listening and before writing? Is there anything we can do in that process to make it cleaner, faster, easier? So I wanted to introduce you today to something that we use at our agency that people actually buy from us, clients do. Um, and that is a message map. This is a thing you can sell and an asset level solution design. Let me show you don't sell the solution design. That's the thing that you use to take everything you've learned and turn it into your plan for what you're actually going to do. So at this point, you should now see the ultimate message match, a message map. Is that what you see? And you bet. Awesome. Cool. So let me walk you through the ultimate message map. You don't need to use this template. You just need to know that there are ways to clean up the mess. I still take great comfort in knowing that I'm always going to have just pages and pages of notes. But then when it comes time to actually do something with those notes, we use a message map 
and the solution design. So your message map has in it, you can create this in anything. There are just parts of this that are documents and parts of this that are boards, like what you're seeing here. So you can use Trello. If you're a big Trello user, go ahead, use that. If you're already in Air Story, you'll see how to do this. If you're in Copy School, we teach this in the new Copy School coming this April. But all this has in it is these sections. So you'll want to come up with these. And I'll very quickly walk you through them. You want any product, AKA any cure to a problem that you have. You have at least one product in most cases, and that could be a service that you sell. Um, it could be any number of different things, like just a solution basically, but we're gonna call it a product to keep it simple. Um, your persona goes in here, any motivators that people have, and we talk a lot about jobs to be done, and that's what we use at our agency to make, um, to write copy. So we've got, you wanna have sections like this, a whole section dedicated to understanding your product, a whole section dedicated to each persona that you've got. So you're typically going to have more than one. And in this case, you just hit the duplicate in here and you'll get as many as you need. Any motivators, what are the things that you're hearing in VOC when you went through and made all of those notes, and now you're trying to synthesize them, turn them into something more usable. You're going to put those over in here along with all known jobs. And if there are any past experiments that you know have been run, then you go ahead and you do that. Katie just asked if this is in their story. It is, it's only available though to people in copy school. And again, it'll be coming in uh, April. So when we're in here for a product, these are the kinds of things that we wanna know. And you can watch the replay again, because this is an easy enough a uh, tool for you to make yourself inside Trello, or if you're using AirStory inside AirStory, it's just a board. You wanna know who made the product, how, when, and where it's made. And this is stuff that will always come up during research, but will typically be scattered all over the free world. So we're trying to bring it to a single place, not to remove the mess from the middle, but to clean up the later half of that messy middle. Um, any interesting features, what it costs and what you get. And of course, in copy school, we talk about minimum viable commitments, like minimum viable time and financial use cases for it, the value proposition at the product level, and then any features. So you want to know about this inside um, as you go through your product stuff. Now, for those who are like, where is this in copy school? Again, it's the new one coming in uh, April. Everybody who's already in copy school, as long as you're a member of copy school or you've paid for it in full in the past, yes, Bruno, you're automatically upgraded to get that. So never fear. You'll get that. You'll get these templates as well. Yes. New copy school is coming in April. Um, okay. And then we want to quickly look at personas and then I'm going to move over to the solution design because it's a really critical step that can help a lot of folks who are um, struggling with what to do between learning all this stuff about prospects, about um, the product, everything else, and then actually turning that into great copy. That's typically a really challenging switch that happens in there. So the solution design can help with that. Okay, so the persona though, again, you wanna make one persona, you wanna duplicate one of these for every persona that you've got. So here, if you have three personas, you would just hit this duplicate button and do persona A, persona B, persona C, and then give them each their name to replace this in the curly brackets. This is the template, so it's not filled in. I'm not gonna show you the filled in one, it'd be too distracting. So we wanna have any notes we have about this persona. You can just click a little add note here to pop up a note and go through it. There are other things we'll teach those inside copy school. Um, any problems or motivators they have, we have a couple spots for those. Moment of highest tension is a tag we're using there. Um, failed solutions, so what this persona has tried before trying solutions like yours or in place of solutions like yours, or could be even including past solutions of yours that weren't quite good enough for what they were trying to get done. Such as if you have somebody who's taking your course, it didn't fail them necessarily, but it didn't give them the thing that your mastermind would give them. So that can also be something that goes in there. Any desired outcomes or dream states go there. Then we get into more of the jobs to be done stuff. Uh, so switching and that's habits of the now, worries of the new, pushes of the now and pulls of the new. We'll talk more about that in copy school too. Don't worry about it. Or you can just go Google uh, jobs to be done, the switch and do a Google image search on it. And you will see all sorts of great stuff. I just love image search for actually getting past all the crap. <laughs> Google's search results are like so optimized by SEOs, 
but image results are typically like actually good for what you're looking for. Um, so anyway, go check that out. Um, beliefs and conversion precursors. Rye talks a lot about conversion precursors. So you'll hear more about that there. Um, the list goes on. So learning a lot about your persona, you can see there's a lot to learn here. And that's why something like a message map is so critical because the fact is as you're going through your research, you're actually thinking about all of these things. You're thinking about, oh, listen to all these problems. Which one's most important? Uh, what other solutions have they tried? What are they trying to achieve here? Like what outcome are they really looking for? We're not talking about features. We're not talking about benefits. This isn't just about the product here. This is about what that person you're trying to convert is thinking, feeling what they've done, what's pulling them, what's getting in their way. Everything that you're listening for, we just want to start documenting so that when the time comes to write for this persona, anything for this persona, and you're trying to get them to switch, let's say, but you don't remember where in your notes you had that stuff about switching. And even if you have like a report, a report doesn't have like enough room for everything unless you put it all in the appendix where you have everything and you have to depend on search again there. So this is again, helping us just clean up that messy middle just a bit. Um, any purchase criteria they have, direct competition, what they like about your competition, what they don't like, any constraints they have in making the decision, like they need their team to get involved, they need their wife to say yes, they need more money, they need credit approval um, to make the offer irresistible. So at the persona level, optimizing offers and then other costs if they fail or uh, to take action any really persuasive uh, proof for this group and any click triggers. So again, this is stuff that you can put in a Trello board or here starting right now. Again, we're going to teach in the new copy school. Okay. We have a couple questions. So I'm going to quickly walk you through just the parts of your solution design. So what you want to do is no matter what you're creating, your ultimate message map is something where you keep track of all of your messages over time. You're always updating it. You're always referring back to it. But when it's time to write an email, let's say, um, then you want to create a new solution design. This feels like, is this a necessary step? Can't I just like jump in and start doing it? You could, but this is the part where if you believe more that you should spend a bunch of your time uh, sharpening the ax instead of just going ahead and trying to chop down the tree like with brute force, this is for people who sharpen the ax first. Um, and this is what most people recommend doing. Start by making sure everything's like perfectly ready to go so that when you swing, you're more likely to chop that thing down faster. So in this, we have these parts, a brief. This is a really simple, just like document. You can see it below here, just the core stuff about your one reader, what the product is that you're trying to sell, et cetera. A heuristic analysis of the control, um, the primary job that's trying to be achieved, your rule of one. PCPO is a new one we talk about more now in copy school. So the problem, the cure, the proof, and the offer, these four parts that we just keep seeing come up again and again. We haven't taught PCPO before, but um, is quite useful when it comes time to actually go ahead and write something. And then your solution design itself. Um, so have that solution design. We can talk more about this in another tutorial. This is really just a like a, a quick overview of a tutorial. And then, then and only then are you ready to get into your uh, framework. Now, in this case, it's attention, interest, desire, action, but it could be problem, agitation, solution, the four Ps, any of the other ones as well. Um, so one note, we are yeah going to be bringing this out. April, early April is the launch of Copy School. Um, you can, again, start putting this together if you're like, wow, you went really fast through it. I did. It's a short tutorial. Um, but you can, you know, watch this, pause it, put it together in whatever tool you're already using or in AirStory, and then just start using it with all of the research that you're trying to organize. All right. We'll see you guys in about two weeks. Stay safe out there. And uh, yeah, have a good one. Bye, everyone. Bye.